a link to the forum and then it's already there. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. He's like, Woman, would you post a. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> uh, we're not starting yet. I just pushed start on the stream just to hang out a little bit before. Uh, it doesn't start for another three minutes, but we wanted to hang out and um, and just chat or whatever. I want to see what what's going on in the chat here. Um, I got my computer down here looking at stuff. So we got some people in there. Anyway, hi everybody. Welcome to the SVS Third Thursday. Uh, it's going to start in a couple minutes and. And we're going to talk all about Inktober today. But um, I got Lee right here. And uh, we're doing good. Thanks for, the, thanks for the compliment on my shirt. This is my Inktober shirt. First Inktober shirt ever made. Legally, I think. I'm sure there's some bootleg ones out there. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's see. Sasha says she's working on her Inktober right now. Awesome. That's perfect. I'm working on my, I uh, can't work and present at the same time, but I've got it behind me right here. And I uh, can't wait to show you guys what I've been doing, what other people have been doing. Lee's got ideas for Inktober. Anyways, this is going to yeah. be a good one. You guys doing good? Is everybody doing good? I think everybody's doing good. Everybody's, uh... Uh, they're calling me Mini Lee the mascot. I mean, I'm stuck in the computer. <laughs> we okay. I got this software for doing live streams, and I haven't figured out how to use everything, all the features on it. Um, but there are some cool features, like having Lee actually be on, you know, the screen um, remotely. But until then, he's going to be right here as our our Inktober mascot. <laughs> you be the little an the angel on my shoulder. <laughs> I'm just stuck in here. Like, I'm just stuck in the computer. <laughs> it's like I dream of genie or something. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the guy behind you? They say. So yeah, that's Lee. <laughs> Actually, this would be super just helpful. Just hanging out. Yeah, <laughs> this would be really helpful uh, if you are like. An uh, SVS rabbit. Is that what we're calling them rabbits, right? We're calling them rabbits, yeah. Yeah, if you're a rabbit, and by rabbit, that's anybody who's like familiar with SVS, is an SVS subscriber, or goes on the forum all the time, and you're here today and you've been to these Third Thursdays before, if you see a question in the chat like, uh, who's that guy on the monitor, or what's this all about, just you, we give you permission to go ahead and answer it and, and, and take ownership of that and just say, oh, it's, that's Lee. He's one of the SVS founders. Uh, you know, that's Jake talking. He's, he's, the, he's whoever. Um, but yeah, if they have any questions, go for it. Because that's one of the best things is, I think, about this community is there is ownership. There's people that, that know what's going on that have been with us for the last three, three years, two years, three years. Almost three years now. Yeah. So anyway, I think we're going to go ahead and get started now. I'm just going to scroll through these things again, these, uh, whatever it's called, chat, live chat. There's a words right on the top there calling it live chat. And uh, uh, Hannah, Hannah or Hannah, she says, I love SVS, haven't been to a third Thursday before. So welcome to your first third Thursday. These are, these range from being super, not super formal, but somewhat formal to somewhat low key. And Today's kind of like a low-key hangout. Um, it's the 20th day or the 19th day of Inktober, and we just wanted to talk about Inktober and how uh, that challenge works to um, improve your skills, uh, how it's this nice community to be a part of, and I want to show people what they can do with their Inktobers and what they can do for Inktober and how I'm doing my Inktober. So that's what we're doing this time. Other times, what are some other third Thursday? Last year, or no, last Thursday, or last month on third Thursday, we talked about how to do art school right. And we brought in a, a guy who's David Dibble, who's currently teaching art school. And we just talked about like some of the things students should be doing that aren't that they aren't doing, 
they could be doing better to get the most out of art school. And the thing I liked about this, I don't know, and uh, I don't know if you've got this too, Lee, but a lot of that stuff we talked about applies, even if you're not going to art school, you're just an artist working on stuff, um, which I thought was cool. Yeah, and we've done stuff on agents, and we've done stuff on yeah, how everything, to, getting work, what to include in your portfolio. How to get um, an agent, how to get your first 10,000 followers on a social media platform. That was a good one. Uh, right, let me ask you guys, because we're, we're still brainstorming new ones coming up. I'd like to start doing some media ones. I think this one that Jake is doing today can kind of be a segue into just some demos like on how each of us works and show the tools and show you know just walking through an image um does that sound like something that would be interesting to you so uh, let us know in the chat that sounds good to me all right so let's get started uh, talking about inktober um so lee you'll keep an eye on the chat and we've got lisa keeping an eye on the chat too right yeah and uh i will keep an eye as best as i can but First things first, I just want to explain what Inktober is, what the rules are. I'm sure there's some of you here that aren't familiar. There's a lot of you that are, but there's something to be gained for everyone in this. So let me just go over to the computer here and switch to um, our thing, Inktober.com. And there we go. You guys hopefully can see that. So this is the Inktober.com website, and it's just branched off of my personal website next year i'll have an official like full inktober website um uh, that that'll work uh that'll i don't know that'll be cooler instead of just having a page on my site but every october artists all over the world take on the inktober drawing challenge by doing one ink drawing a day the entire month that's all it is uh each day do an ink drawing and you do that for 31 days straight it's kind of hard <laughs> it's it sounds easy but it's 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 harder than it looks um, so here's the official rules you make a drawing in ink you post it online you hashtag it with uh, either inktober or inktober 2017 I see other people hashtag by location so they might say inktober Indonesia so you can see all the Indonesian artists working on it uh, which I think is really cool um, I might do that going forward for the rest of the month. Might do Inktober Provo, so you can see who else in Provo is doing it where I live. Um, and then you just repeat it every day of October. And uh, it's it's a challenge designed to um, improve your creativity, like creative thinking skills, to develop like some positive drawing habits where you're wanting to draw every day or you're wanting to create something every day. Um, and, and it's also uh, designed to get you better at drawing, at the craft of drawing. And the reason for ink, as opposed to pencil, as opposed to watercolor, as opposed to, you know, Photoshop, uh, the reason for ink is because it is, um, it's a cut and dry medium. You make a mark and that mark has consequences. Uh, it's if it's good then you get to keep it if it's not good then you have to still keep it and deal with it um and and see if you could still make your drawing work and I, for me personally what happens when and I've, I've been inking for years now but as i was learning and, and even still now when that mark goes down and it's not exactly the mark that i wanted to make my brain makes a note of it a neural pathway is formed that says okay don't do that again and when a great mark is put down, another neural pathway is formed that says, okay, do them like that. And that's really how habit is formed. And that's how, I think that's where talent and ability grows out of, is these neural pathways being formed by, by you repeatedly doing something over and over. Um, when you draw with, with pencil, you know, when you draw with something that's easy to erase and, and go back and fix, um, you're so tempted to do that that um, you spend a lot of time like fixing and adjusting and fixing and adjusting instead of getting through and finishing the drawing. And so Inktober uh, with the inking is a way for you to finish a drawing, look at everything good and everything bad that's happened, and you know move on to your next drawing and fix that and get better there. So that is Inktober. Now, the last couple of years I started doing the official prompt list, and this was because some people were like, well, I don't know what to draw today. 
And, and I even got to that point too. I didn't know what to draw either. And so the prompt list is designed to, um, to uh, uh, give you something to, to jump off of. You know, so day one was swift. That could be interpreted in any way. And what's cool is when, when you've got a hundred artists doing this or a thousand artists doing this or however many are doing it, you could see uh, all those different artists take on that one word and how they creatively interpret it. And it's just, I don't know, it's a really cool uh, element to the challenge and to the community that does Inktober. And for me, it's made me more creative because um, I'm forced to use one of these words because I'm wanting to do the prompts. And I'm forced to come up with something that, that can use those words as opposed to falling back on what I usually draw. You know, if I were to just do, <laughs> if I, you know, I love drawing robots. I don't think that's a secret if you're familiar with my work. And I would just have drawn a robot every day if I didn't know what to draw. That's like my default, a robot or a dinosaur. Uh, but when I come to the word like ship, day 25, um, you know, that all of a sudden brings other ideas into my mind. And it makes me want to, want to, you know, uh, try to be a little bit more creative. So that's the Inktober website. Um, I have on here a list of pens that I like to use, that other people like to use, different tools that I like to use. Uh, but yeah, check out the Inktober website and, and you can look at all that stuff there. Also, um, I had an ink class from SVS Learn, which uh, is a couple hours long and just really, uh, you know, I knock out like the, a physiological approach to inking, uh, tool approach to inking, technique approach to inking. Uh, how to use your body, how to use your hand, your arms to, to ink um, effectively. So, yeah, so this is Inktober. Let me switch back to the screen here. And I'm back. Okay, Lee, did you, were there any questions during that or, or did you have anything? Uh, you're, you're going through them pretty good. Um, the, the couple of questions were uh, is digital or watercolor okay? You kind of addressed that. Mm -hmm. and, and but the, the one people are confused about is the pencil underlay, mm -hmm. pencil sketch. Is that okay? Yeah. So pencil sketch is okay. The 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 key there is finishing it in ink. So early on, what I did was I tried to do as little pencil sketching as I could and force myself to use as much ink, uh, go in it with ink, and that was so hard. But I learned so much from that. I got so much better at inking because I didn't have any safety net. It was like, let's make a, you know, let's make this drawing work, and I'm visualizing it in my head first, and I'm, I'm going over it before I put my, my pen to the paper. Um, but now, uh, uh, it also takes so much more time. So I'm, I'm on a, a much more limited schedule these days, and, and, and I'm wanting to elevate um, my designs a little bit more than, than. Than what I was doing just with ink, and so I personally do um, a sketch first, and then I ink over the top of it. And I don't think there's any harm in that. And I think um, uh, ultimately it comes down to like uh, your your ink line that you're putting down is the permanent line, and that's the one that you have to live with, and um, you know for good or bad. And I think that's where the the heart of of getting better at drawing comes from is is putting down marks that you have to live with. Can I suggest something there, Jake? Too? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Two things. Um, if you want to be a purist about it, I suggested this in the chat, but for the rest mm -hmm. of the people who aren't watching that, uh, if you want to be a purist, you can use a light gray marker that is ink and in place of the pencil, mm. and that way you can sketch out your big shapes and get a little bit of detail going, and then you know use it the same way that Jake's using his pencil lines. Yeah. Um, and the other thing that I think is really fun that I sometimes have uh, my students do is they do the sketch and the ink drawing like Jake's recommending, and then I have them just do the straight ink version of that exact thing next to it, mm. but with no underlay. And mm. it just has a different quality, and it's really neat to see. And, and both of them have their pros and cons. And some, sometimes the raw, unplanned mark of the ink can be just amazing, and sometimes you don't get that if you're following the pencil lines. And so I so just an exercise you may want to try uh, if you got some time. That's cool. Yeah, that's a good that's a good idea. I didn't think to do that where you sketch it out but then you draw it right next to it. <clears throat> I really like that. That's cool. <clears throat> um, again, Inktober is for you. It's not for me. So 
whatever it is that you end up wanting to do for Inktober is completely up to you. And and you just do it. You do you. So if if you're like, I want to be a digital artist. I want to get better better at digital. Go ahead, do digital. Um, I just know for me, for me personally, and the the challenge is designed to be getting better at ink and to be getting at dr- better at drawing through inking, through the permanent nature of ink. So so that's why I'm always emphasizing drawing and ink drawing. Um, you know, doing black and white ink drawings, and and that's why I do it myself. So I want to show what I've been working on for Inktober. Uh, have you guys check that out? I'm just going to move the camera here. So um, hope you guys don't get sick. Okay, while, while Jake's moving that, I'm going to add in. The, the drawings are for you, but I would suggest don't whip out and do it digitally. You can do it in ink. <laughs> Promise. <laughs> You'll get better. Changing your tools changes the way you make marks and it changes the draw the way the drawings come out it changes the shapes you make even uh, when i switch to a fat tip marker versus a, a dip pen brush or dip pen nib it's a different drawing and so if you're just primarily digital especially those of you guys who don't have that traditional background it's a great opportunity to just turn off the computer and do some real drawings so uh so give it a whirl i know it's uncomfortable so let me explain this, um, and, and I'll back up Lee there too. Don't wimp out. Try to really try to push yourself. Um, you know, if if you're not good at ink, then inking is a good, perfect thing for you to do, because um, you'll get better and, and you'll thank yourself later for doing it. So what I wanted to do for October uh, this year was instead of doing 31 drawings on 31 different pieces of paper, I wanted to do 31 drawings all on the same sheet. And so I took each prompt and designed a character to go with each prompt. So it started off with this character right here. Um, this is Swift. And I've been writing little stories for each of these, these characters as well. Uh, and then we have here Divided. And we have Poison. And we have Long. So I had this creature with really long legs. And then Sword. So she's a sword dealer. I won't go through all of them, but I'm taking the word and I'm getting the gist of it, or I'm finding some creative way to do to do that word. For example, like today, this is cloud, and it's this dragon flying in the air. And I thought, I'll make it a white dragon, and the white against the the blue sky would make it feel like a cloud. It's not a literal cloud, but it's sort of a, I guess, a symbolic cloud or a abstract cloud type of type of idea. Um, and the way that I'm working, I'm going to show you here, I'm going to go over to my computer over here. So this is my Photoshop file. And I have been doing them day to day. You can see here, I'm just going to turn these off, all these layers off, and show you from the beginning. So my initial idea was to have it all on one sheet of paper. Um, hopefully the contrast is pretty good here. And then um, I realized I needed two sheets, so it got, it got bigger. But there's my sketch for day one, and then my sketch for day two, and my sketch for day three, four, five. And I just started to add these on as I go, go along. Um, and, uh, and what happens is each day I will print, print them out and then use the light box to, um, to draw over them. So let me go ahead. And then the last couple of days, I realized like my time's gonna be limited the rest of the month. So I went in and started figuring out where everyone else is going to go and, uh, ahead of time. So there's that. And then what happens is, I'll go back over here, guys. Um, let me just put this here. Is this just one day of your Inktober? No, no, no. <laughs> How many days does this consist of? A character a day. Oh, okay, got it, got it. One character each day. So then you can see here, um, I print these out. So this is tomorrow's. This was today's. Um, So print these out, and then once they're printed out, I'll just put these back here. Um, I turn on my light box, which is underneath here, 
and you can see the artwork under there and I'll come over here and place the character just where it needs to be and then I'll just ink over the top of it right here and I'll turn off the lights just to make sure the inking's going good and then turn it back on to make sure my you know I'm getting the proportions right or whatever and what's cool is I'll make uh, changes on the fly like I'll realize that my sketch wasn't what I really wanted or wasn't compatible with the drawing so I'll go in and while I'm inking decide oh you know like for here I need a little more a few more, a few more twigs going on in here I need some more textures uh, that I didn't have included in the sketches so that's that's what I'm doing any questions on that stuff seen any questions about your process there. Okay. So there's that. Now I want to show you where did they go? Um, I had a couple books out. I don't know where, oh, there they are. So the first year that I did Inktober, and this is really cool, and this is like the next part. Oh, actually, before we go into this, I wanted to show Lee's idea for doing Inktober as well. I'm going to switch to that screen if you want to talk about it, Lee. Sure. Um, a lot of people are probably, uh, or some people may be um, intimidated with really heavy detailed line work if that's not the way you think. Um, there's a lot of ways to approach ink drawings and ink paintings. And, uh, and my way is totally different than Jake's. Jake does really super detailed uh, line stuff, but I pro I'm more of a painter. Um, than a drawer, and so I approach the ink like a like a painter. I approach it in big masses. Um, I use. I don't know if you can see because I'm so tiny. I'm, I'm, am I on the screen right now, Jake? I can't tell what's on the screen. But no, but I have your ink, your three images. I have the paper oh, airplane one up. There we go. Okay, okay. So I'm just using basically a brayer, like a roller, and uh, and print making ink, and I also use just regular. Um, you know, just black black magic ink or whatever, and I'll lay in just the full silhouette shape, and then I just roll white ink on top of it. Mm. And uh, and it just gives you big masses. It gives you a lot of texture. No line work at all, except for where it's needed, like where the little lines are coming down. Um, and I'm I'm not good at it. I'm just playing. I just kept messing around with this technique and using it as a way to experiment. Um, but I love it because it, I think in big masses and big big shapes. Um, not a lot of detail, and so that, that's kind of just a difference in the way that I think. And so don't think that, oh, I'm using ink now, so I have to do super microscopic detailed drawings. You don't. You can do big, sloppy ink paintings. You can do big masses with a lot of texture. Um, so it's just a different way to approach it. So I just wanted to kind of show that. Really cool. Thanks for sharing that. And you right. play around with different papers too. If you have a really rough watercolor paper, you get all kinds of texture. If I do it on bond paper, like a you know printer paper, it'll be a lot smoother. And so, just a lot of cool, cool ways to mess around. All right. So, this is the first Inktober that I did. It's Inktober 2009. Um, and what this was was I decided that when I finished my drawings, I wanted to collect them in in a book. And, uh, and so this is the, the book that I came out with, um, which came out in November, the, the month right after Inktober was over with. Um, and so all I did was, you know, day two, then my drawing. Day three, then my drawing. And what was cool was um, these looked really good, I think, printing in a book. But then um, it was also just a, a nice way for me to archive this for myself personally and to give it to friends and to sell on my website um, and oftentimes like I will go flip through this more than dig up the old sketchbook that I drew these Inktobers in so it's it's easier to to you know have a book of something <laughs> than to actually uh, sometimes keep keep the originals so if you are really liking the stuff that you're working on consider putting it together in a book um, here's a few years later, this is 2013 Inktober, uh, I had a nicer print job done for these and what I did was um, uh, posted my or, or printed my drawings in here but then I started adding to them to, to fill out the book even more so um, I drew this drawing for Inktober and then when I did the book I did these extra guys to put in, uh, to put in the book and these guys actually are digital inks. Um, that I uh, I just did straight up in Photoshop. 
um, to try to match. I found a really cool digital brush um, that matched the ink brush that I like that I like to use. Um, so you could see. Can we talk about that for a second, Jake? You just said something I think is really important and, and want to highlight. You know, we were talking about doing traditional work, and, and then Jake's talking about how he took how that informed the brush that he just made to go digitally, and that happens a lot when you're working in traditional media. It just behaves in a certain way, and then when you go digital, you can say, "Hey, wait, this isn't matching what happened." mess with the brushes and mess with the settings and all of a sudden you're like oh yeah that feels just like it did on paper and that's where the benefit really comes in to going back yeah check it out uh, hold on one second sorry guys I don't know uh, I'm just seeing that it's that it's frozen frozen everybody should refresh if they can't see it um, that's what everybody on the board is saying just refresh your browser or reload your browser. Let me ask Lisa if it's uh, it's ready to go. Hold on one second. Okay, I'm gonna. On it's saying. Spinning here, no sound. Uh, they're saying, Jake, that it's going on and off. Mine, mine is doing the same thing. Okay, let me over at... Um... Yeah, now it's, saying it's not receiving it at a fast enough rate. Okay, let me troubleshoot that really quick. I got a backup solution here, maybe. Uh, yeah, or worst case scenario, kill the Skype connection with me. Oh, I wonder if that'll... That is competing with it. I'll answer questions on the board. All right. Everybody say goodbye to Lee. <laughs> we'll pull him on if it, if it gets better. Okay. Now I'm all alone. Um, we'll see if that helped improve the stream. I want to show some more Inktober books here. Um, Okay. Well, let's see here. Just text me, Lee, if um, if there's other problems, or Lisa can text me too. But I'm going to show some of these other Inktober projects that people have done, and uh, and then uh, and then we'll take questions. Hopefully, hopefully we get a better uh, streaming signal going here. So this right here is books that people have sent me over the years, mostly last two years, of Ink Pro Inktober projects that they've done. And I, I just want to show you all the different things that you can do for Inktober. So the first one here I want to show you, um, this was done by Cleo Chang. And what she did was... Um, she told, and this is kind of a theme that I see a lot, a lot of people doing. She told a story uh, day to day in October, and it's the stories about a little skeleton who goes to work for a uh, a, uh, a circus, and he goes around scaring everybody in the circus. And anyways, it's just a really adorable story. Um, and in the end, they end up accepting him and and having him you know, be um, a member of the circus as well. So that's Cleo's. And then she printed in this nice little tiny book, and she sold this on her website and at different conventions. This guy, what he decided to do for Inktober is um, to do a portrait every day for Inktober. So this is actually an original drawing that he did in the book that he sent to me of one of my characters. But you could see here... Each day is a different, uh, different portrait of a character. I, I think these are all characters that he's come up with over the years, or maybe just for Inktober. But it was really cool to see, um, 
to see so many different um, portraits and different character designs. Anyway, so there's that. Uh, this guy's name is, I always forget it, it's Col um What's his name? <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> Here it is on the business card. Um, I want you to find his website. Xavier Colette. Yep, Xavier Colette. And he is a French artist, extremely talented. I hope to meet him in person someday. Okay, so now what I have here is Linktober. And this is um, a little sketchbook. And what they did was they did, for the Inktober drawings, they did um, characters from Legend of Zelda and things from Legend of Zelda. So that was really cool. This is Joel Siegel. And you can go find him at joeldsiegel.com. Uh, here we have Pau G uh, Gomez. And what they did was they um, did fairy tales every day of the month. So a different fairy tale and uh, collected them in, in a book as well. So we've got Dorothy, we've got Jack and the Beanstalk, we've got Jungle Book and a, uh, Sinbad. Sam Hattaker, uh what he did was, um, let's see here, what does it say in the film and TV? So um, these are all different people from, from television or animation or movies or st stuff like that. So he just did a character each day from, you know, his favorite movies and TV shows. Pretty cool. And, you know, really cool style. Um, here we have Inktober by uh, Jeffrey. Uh, Jeffrey Grace. Let's see if he's got a website back here. Uh, artwork by geo.com and so what he did was um, all kinds of like creepy stuff <laughs> I think what he did was he had his own prompt list that he was working off of so grave demon mask creature of the black lagoon gore stuff like that so it's all like kind of Halloweeny creep creepy stuff um, Greg Lesniak his website is uh, where is his website? GregLuzniak.com And what he did was, and I love, I mean, he's got such a great inky style going on here. Um, uh, he just did a bunch of really cool, moody pieces. This is the coolest one, the one he used for the cover. Uh, Grizzly Owl. <laughs> uh, but they're all, they're all kind of in this fantasy sort of realm of, of ideas that he's got going on here but cool style kind of a concept art thing going on there lots of fun um, what else do we have this one's really cute take me home this is by Sydney uh, Luke and her website is where is her website let's see if it's on here somewhere ah here we go you can follow her oh yes yeah, Sydney Luke at uh, dot tumblr dot com and check out her work uh, but what she did was a story. So each day was um, a page of a story, and then she wrote the words um, on this side. So, you know, there was a girl who loved playing in the forest. One day she found something while playing in the woods. What'd she find? It was a little lamb, a fluffy little animal. And so it's all about her and this relationship with this little, um, this little lamb type of thing and it's just I mean these are adorable drawings and she told an entire story in in 31 days it's really cool maybe it's not a lamb maybe it's an alpaca okay so there's that sorry sorry if I got the animal wrong <laughs> Sydney all right monster teeth by William Labida and his website is um I'm not sure where it is. William Labita. Try, try just doing a Google search for his name. So this is Monster T. So every day is a monster. This guy's got a really cool uh, style as well. Very um, um, geometric uh, with deep, heavy blacks. And he threw in some color as well. So every other day is like color day, 
uh, black and white day, colors, black and whites, lots of fun. Um, and then this one I thought was really cool as well. This is First Date, it's an Inktober Heart Story. And it's just a tiny little book. So you don't have to do anything big and grand. You can do something tiny. Um, and this is just a, another little story told day to day, um, picture by picture, no words even. Um, it's a fun little book. This is done by um, At When We Were Little. Um, when we were, uh, when I was little dot big cartel dot com. So you could check that out there. Um, this is a book that was sent to me. These are Inktober UK. So a bunch of people in the UK put all their drawings together to make a big book. This is a thick book. Uh, and so you can go through and they're organized by artist. And you can see all these different artist drawings. It's a lot of fun. A lot of cool stuff going on in there. So there's that. Um, monstrous, monstrously Mundane by Jeff Palmberg. And Jeff sent this to me, and he drew a little picture of me in there. Love it. Thank you, Jeff. Um, and you can see here he did monsters as well in his style. Um, but he did something funny for each monster, too. So each, each image is kind of telling a little story, like um, the blob put some time in on the treadmill. Um, <laughs> what else do we got here? Uh, the count flosses on day 14. <laughs> So there's that. And then lastly, uh, Danny Diaz is a guy I met in Spain when I was out there. And he did such a cool a cool idea for his, his book. And so what this is is an accordion-style book. So it's one continuous image. And the image continuously tells um, a story as well, somewhat. Uh, they're somewhat connected, but, but really it's just a, cool, just a cool way to do Inktober also. So that is, um, that's Inktober. I think our, um, our stream is pretty good. So I'm going to call Lee back and see if he wants to um, Skype with us and we'll take questions. Let me just move this camera up here so that you guys are going to just be sick. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there we go. Okay, let me call Lee. We'll see if he answers, and then we'll take take some October questions. Hey, Lee. Do you hear me? Do you hear me okay, Lee? I can hear you fine. Just keep, keep your video off. Okay, I'll keep the video off, and... Uh, um, well, let's take questions now, if we have any. Let me just adjust. Uh, we do have a question. Um, there was somebody asking about your skeleton uh, one that you linked to. Uh, the bones? The, the one with the little, the, the book that I went through? Yeah. Okay, what were they asking about it? Can you turn off the volume on, on YouTube? Just take questions, no. Hey, wait, I'm confused. There's a lot of sound happening. <laughs> Just turn off, the, turn off the sound to YouTube. Oh, sorry, okay. There we go. There we go. So what was the question? Which book was it? The, the skeleton book? Yeah, the first one that you showed about the skeleton. That's what they were saying. Yeah, let me grab it here really quick. Uh, surname's Cleo Chang. She's at cleochang.com. And this is her book. And I don't know if she has any left, but it's worth it to try and maybe email her, begging her to do a reprint if they're all sold out. That would be cool. I kind of mentioned in the chat that maybe we can get a hold of these and, and carry them in our store. Uh-huh. So if yeah. you guys are interested in that, maybe we could do that. That would be cool. Any other questions going along with, uh, with what we've talked about? If, if not, we can call it good. No, people are people are really really digging it. Um, they love these little books. I didn't know so many people had made books. Yeah, and that's I mean, there's more. That, those are just the people who have sent me them. Um, yeah, 
one of the things uh, that's I mean, you know that's when I incepted is that a good word when I first came up with Inktober it was like not only is it a way to get better but it's also a way to archive and collect your stuff and either you know put something out there to share with the community whether you want to sell it or give it away or whatever so um, yeah if you feel like your drawings are good enough and it's something that you want to do uh, hey Jake, make, what, if make we a did, book. what if we asked everybody to turn in their best drawing and we did a compilation? Well, that'd be cool. That'd be really cool. That's something that, that I've thought about before, like a best, you know, best of Inktober yearbook or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's not a bad yeah. idea. If you guys would be in, into that, you know, tell us in the in the chat. That'd be cool. Yeah, that would, that would be really cool. I'm getting some questions about where people are printing their books. Um, there's a lot of different places, and Jake can recommend um, some as well, but I would say um, Print Ninja is a fantastic service. Mm -hmm. I'll type it here in the chat. I love Print Ninja because for one main reason is they have a calculator that shows how much it costs, and you can change the variables. I don't like calling a printer or emailing a printer and having to enter a specific thing, and then they send me a quote, and then I'm like, oh, well, what if I cut the pages in half, and then i got to do another quote on that one? Uh, they just give it to you in real time. That'd be cool. Um, I, I, you know, if you're really into it, if you really want to go whole hog, I guess, uh, uh, find a printer in the town that you live in because it's really good to, like, work face-to-face -face with these guys, um, to, to, uh, to look at proofs in your own hands instead of a PDF on a screen. Um, I love doing that. I found a printer that lives in my town locally, and I, I print a lot of my books through them as well. So, you know, that's that's another option. Every major city has a local printer, you know, in the area or a handful of them as well. So if you live, you know, if you live close to, to any sort of city, you should be able to find someone that can, can print a book for you. Um, yeah, and because it's in black and white, it'll probably be pretty cheap yeah. comparatively. Yeah. So I'm seeing a few questions about what I'm planning on doing with my Inktober. So I'm not making a book out of this one. Uh, what I'm going to do is make a, a print. It'll be smaller, it won't be actual size, but I'm going to make a print um, that uh, that you can um, hang up and what I'll probably do is have a little tiny booklet, not even a booklet, just a sheet that lists each of the characters that I came up with and what their story is as well. So be be looking out for that that's that's what i'm planning on doing uh what else do we have um yeah people are just people just seem stoked everybody seems to like the idea of doing an anthology with all of our stuff in there together i think that would be amazing to see that um, yeah yeah we'll talk about we'll talk about that should should we mention um our idea for the next phase yeah let me look before we do that i just want to take on this one question from Don. Um, sure. He says, you mentioned in one of your videos that you had mates who were better at drawing than you early on in school. What made you surpass that and what measures did you take to get better at drawing? Um, I thought that was, a, that was a good question uh, because for me early on drawing was all, was kind of, um, uh, there's there's nourishment that I needed, right? <laughs> and part of it was competition. I had to be better than the guys, or try try to be better than them. Uh, but another part of it was finding nourishment within the work itself, within the drawings. So when I was drawing, I was actually enjoying the drawing, regardless if I ever showed them to anybody. Um, and so part of it was competition. Part of it was also like just getting you know a pat on the back from my parents or from other peers. But what ultimately I think the shift for me to where I saw myself wanting to get better and actually getting better as an artist was finding nourishment within the work, meaning I wanted to, um, I just wanted the work to be good on its own and, and how it made me feel. And that's something that I've been thinking a lot about lately um, is what's the reason that you do art? And then as far as what, what steps I took to get better, because it wasn't about being better than my friend anymore. It was about me being the best that I could be. Um, uh, I wasn't looking at what, you know, maybe I would look at some of their techniques, but I wasn't thinking that I had to copy them or I had to one-up them. I was just looking at how can I make this drawing better than the last drawing? 
and each drawing better than the last drawing and each thing I was doing what is it what am I finding inside it that excites me and it was just doing a lot a lot of drawing we call it line mileage in the animation world how many line miles <laughs> do you draw and you've got to put in a lot of line mileage uh, to get to get good and better at it and and I should say it's not just putting in the mileage but also learning from a, a competent teaching source so for me I had some good art teachers I also had some really good art books that I learned from and I wish I had this I wish I had this growing up uh, I wish I had something like svslearn.com or YouTube videos or even you know uh, all these different art schools that are online I wish I had these online tutorials that that could teach and there's so many classes on SVS learn that 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 can show you like my how to draw everything class shows you from step one holding a pencil you know how do you go from that to actually drawing a character designing a character and there's so many classes that we have there that that I wish I had growing up because I would have I think I'd be <laughs> I would have gotten to where I'm at now ten years ago if I nope that's what I'm doing right now <laughs> All right, so the thing we wanted to talk about next month, and this is actually Lee's idea, and it's a brilliant idea. It's called Slovember. So in Inktober, there's a lot of hustle. You gotta do a drawing every day. You gotta you know, arrange your schedule in a way that, that you've got a, an hour chiseled out of the day that you can do that drawing and, and, and bust out 31 drawings. And it's a lot of work. It's a lot of, uh, um, uh, like, I, like I said, it's a lot of hustle. So his idea is Slovember. This is something I'm going to try as well. And that is take the entire month, slow down, and put all of that energy into one piece. One piece. And so at the end of the month, you have a show piece. You have this nice portfolio piece that you can stick in your portfolio. Or you can show to clients. Or you can do, uh, you know, you can, you, can, you can do whatever you want with. You know, you can put it in an illustrative book. You can make a print something from it, or you could just have it as something, you know, a calling card on your website or on social media. So Slovember, and what I think, what I'm gonna do for Slovember is color my piece, my, um, my Inktober piece. It's all in ink, and I think it'd look good in color, so I'm gonna spend some time slowing down and working on coloring that a little bit methodically. So I think that's it. I'm going to see if there's any other questions um, and then we will cut it out. Any other last questions? How do we keep our children interested in art without overdoing it? Both my kids currently love to draw and I want to keep encouraging that. They even make their own books. Here's the deal with kids. I have five kids, ages 16 to seven, and all of them love drawing, but I don't, not, it's not their passion for some of them, right? And so for me, what I've done, what my wife's done is we make sure drawing is fun and there's ways they explore. And anytime I try to sit down and say, no, 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 son, here's how you draw a hand correctly. That's when they're like, I'm done. I don't want to do this. It's not fun anymore. Uh, and so I think early on in those stages, it has to be fun and they need positive reinforcement for all the good stuff that they do. And then when they start to get a passion for it and they realize, hey, I kind of like this, I like doing this, um, and they, and they want to, there's goals that they want to set, they want to do a book, they want to get a job as an animator or something like that, or comic artist, uh, as they get older in their teens maybe, then you can start working with them on actual um, uh, technique and stuff like that. I'm gonna answer Lee here. Hey, you're back. Hey, man. Hey. Uh, let me turn off the sound again. Okay, sounds good. Uh, so it got hung up a little bit on if you were talking about Slovember, I missed it. A lot of people missed it as well. Okay, so I'll do it one more time. Okay. Uh, basically, yeah, for those of you that missed it, here's Slovember. So they had, basically, Inktober is this month of, of hustle and hard work. You've got you to set aside you know, time each day to bust out a drawing. And Slovember is kind of like taking all of that energy and instead of doing this massive big 31 day thing, it's taking all of that energy and putting it into one piece and slowing down and really working on that piece 
and, and fixing it and adjusting it and getting it into you know, a really good place so that it is a portfolio piece. It's a calling card that you can post on social media. It's you know, maybe a print that you make. Maybe it's the beginning of an illustrated book or something like that. Uh, and so what I was telling them that, that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Inktober drawings where I did all these 31 drawings every day and I'm going to spend time slowing down and coloring it in November. So uh, that's the challenge. Um, and Lee's going to be doing What are you going to do for it, Lee? I got a big painting plan for it. It's going to take at least a month to finish it. Okay. That sounds good. So, yeah, if that's something you're into, um, you know, working on one piece, then you can join us in doing that. That'd be great. We'll probably talk about it at the end, you know, in December. See how that went, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I think that's it, and I want to add just one last thing. Um, as far as Inktober, if you haven't started it yet this month, and you might think the month is shot and it's over. There's still 10 days left in the month. That's 10 drawings you could get done. That's 10 more drawings than you have finished right now. So. Don't think that it's over. Don't think that you missed out. If you did it for a couple days and you lost steam and you're like, oh, forget it, I'll do it next year, I invite you to recommit and do five more drawings. Finish out the month with five more drawings. Um, uh, you know, Maybe you just do every other day. You just do one drawing every other day. You sketch it one day, you ink it the next day, whatever. The point is is to get drawing, uh, get out there and, and just like just do something and create something. And so that's my invitation to you, and we will see you next month. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. Thanks, Lee, for doing this. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Good luck. See you guys. I'm going to stop the stream.